A few years ago, I found myself high above the Atlantic Ocean on a 6,000-mile journey to Cameroon, Africa. The purpose of the trip was, along with some colleagues, to establish the first pastoral counseling center in Africa, which is now named the African Counseling Center. There were many life lessons over the weeks that I was there, one of which I want to lift up this morning because of its simplicity and resonance with today's epistle. Arriving at the Yande Airport, neither sure of what day it was nor whose body I was in, I waited for a long time while my host waited with me for my whale to arrive. My whale, as it was called in the store in which I bought it, was simply the largest duffel bag I could find, about my height and about my weight when fully packed. And I had fully packed it, mostly out of anxiety about being in a country that, was a dic that is a dictatorship and where oppression is the rule. And so I had packed everything I could think of that would give me a sense of security, so much so that I could not pick it up but only drag it to the counter at the Richmond airport and wishing the clerk at the counter, good luck in picking it up and putting it on the conveyor belt I headed for my gate. Twelve flying hours later, with the last bag having been delivered from the airplane and my whale not among them, the baggage clerk indicated that it was lost and they would attempt to find it. And so off I went with my colleagues and hosts for the first of many lessons. Day two, three, five, and seven went by with no whale. My hosts and colleagues rallied round me, providing me shirts, pants, toothbrush, yes, I had not thought to put one in my backpack, and even underwear. Today, when I look at those pictures from that trip, I'm struck by the images of me in clothes that fit well enough, but that reflect other people's tastes, especially African tastes. After day three, I no longer noticed other people's clothes felt perfectly normal on me. On day eight, there was much rejoicing among our hosts, for they had found, quote unquote, my bright red whale, and for a fee, it had been released from the airport. Two large men came carrying it to my upstairs room at the seminary where I was staying and set it in the middle of the floor about nine o'clock that evening. <clears throat> I slowly unzipped this big red duffel bag, anticipating being reunited with its contents. And I was completely in the moment stunned by how much I had packed and how little of it I had needed. And my stunnedness, sitting there on the edge of my bed staring at the contents, slowly gave way to a kind of irritation that my life now felt more cluttered and not as simple as before. And so in that moment, I reached down and I just slowly zipped my duffel bag back up, drug it over to the corner of the room, and returned to my happier, simpler existence there in Cameroon. Today's epistle reflects a similar struggle between complexity and simplicity. The Apostle Paul had been in Athens just before coming to Corinth, 
and there had had one of his few missionary failures. For in Athens, he had tried to communicate the Christian message and the philosophic terms of the philosophers of Athens using their terms and their language and their authorities with very little responsiveness. And so after that experience of failure, coming then to the great commercial city of Corinth and speaking to the leaders of a faction there, which also had exalted wisdom, Paul says, as you heard a few moments ago, my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom in Corinth, but in demonstration of the spirit and power, the very embodiment of the spirit and power of God, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And then he says this arresting sentence, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Late at night when I was in Cameroon, I would lie in my bed, absent of TV, radio, or digital devices, and I could hear the distant singing of Christian hymns in people's homes. And what was not lost on me, and that I experienced in myriad ways while there, was that in that land of scarcity, the people called Christians lived with a sense of great abundance, the abundance of the Spirit. Your rector mentioned last Sunday one of the core values that you have adopted as a congregation. In reading that list of core values, a list to guide your congregational life and ministry, I am impressed by their simplicity, their clarity, and their sense of biblical hospitality. We welcome all to participate. We respect all opinions and perspectives. We embrace all individuals. We serve all through local and distant efforts. We educate all by offering formation. We connect all through worship and friendships. We love all, including those with many faiths and those with no faith at all. In their simplicity and clarity, your core values are reflective of Paul's words to the church at Corinth. I know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified.